The private healthcare industry is so unaffordable that patients in the United States are now turning to lenders in order to finance the medical care that they need. And unfortunately, some of these lenders and banks behind this effort are exploiting and preying on people when they're in their most vulnerable position. Now, it's known as patient financing and it's really blowing up and it gives you a sense of just how many different industries are involved and vested in keeping private health insurance private. <laughs> so patient financing is now a multi-billion dollar business with private equity and big banks lined up to cash in when patients and their families can't pay for care. By one estimate from research firm IBIS World, profit margins top 29% in the patient financing industry, seven times what is considered a solid hospital margin. So just to give you a few examples, and I'm sure if you've ever been to a doctor's office or even a dental office, you might have been offered one of these financing options. Uh, there's med credit, there's care credit, which I personally have had experience with. Access One is another example. And what makes this even more sick is that back in the day, hospitals would offer interest free financing to their patients if their patients couldn't afford the care that they needed. Now, hospitals are increasingly turning to lenders to handle the billing process and the financing process. And along with that comes incredibly high interest rates that dig people deeper and deeper into debt that they can't get out of. And it gets to the point where if they're not paying back their debt, their wages get garnished, their tax refunds get garnished. It's really a disgusting system that only gets worse. Now, let's let's talk about how this all works out. Now, millions of people are paying interest on these plans on top of what they owe for medical or dental care by, and this is something that they found through an investigation done by Kaiser Health Network and NPR. Even with lower rates than a traditional credit card, the interest can add hundreds, even thousands of dollars to medical bills and ratchet up financial strains when patients are most vulnerable. In fact, take a look at this graph because it gives you an example of just how much debt increases. So what you're looking at right now is a graph that shows the impact that patient financing has had on the debt of patients in the University of North Carolina health system, which uses lender access one. And the interest rate is 13% for the patients financing through access one. And the interest can also pile on debt. For instance, someone with a $7,000 hospital bill will, who enrolls in like, let's say a five year financing plan at 13% interest. They have to add on another $2,500 in interest payments just to settle that debt. And patients enrolled in a care credit card from Synchrony Bank, the nation's leading medical lender, face a nearly 27% interest rate if they fail to pay off their loan during a zero interest promotional period. The high rate hits about one in five borrowers, according to the company. Now, I I have personal first-hand experience with this back in 2009 when I needed to get some major dental work done, but I didn't have the money to pay for it out of pocket. I was offered the option to finance through care credit and it had that one year promotional interest-free period. Had I not paid within that period, my interest rate would have shot up to 24%. And so luckily I was like living at home with my parents at the time and was able to pay it off within a year. But many Americans are not so lucky. And so it takes a bad situation with this privatized astronomically priced healthcare system and makes it even worse because the vultures come in and they prey on the most vulnerable by trying to you know, take even more money out of them through the interest payments. So this is a picture perfect look into predatory capitalism. So um, I have a unique perspective on this because I don't just host the show, I run the company. So I know uh, the business perspective and from the business perspective, everything is numbers. So let me explain the horror of how they calculate these numbers in this industry. So they say, all right, look, if we do 0% interest in the first year, how much would we have to charge 
to make the 29% margin, which is a giant margin. right? And some charge all the way up to 27% interest. Now, when they do that, they have to calculate in their spreadsheets how many people are going to go bankrupt because they know for a fact that tons of people, a certain percentage of the people will not be able to pay an interest that high. That's why it's predatory and they know it for a fact. Then they have to put into their spreadsheet, Oh, okay, whatever percentage it is, 20%, 40% will not be able to pay. Then they put a second line in, how much will they be able to pay back before they go bankrupt? So they know that they're gonna drive these people who had this health condition into bankruptcy. And they've got a number in their spreadsheet somewhere. It's 40,000 people, 80,000 people, whatever the number is. And they go, oh yes, we are going to charge them an interest rate so high that we will make a lot of money, but we will destroy their lives. And they go, okay, great, uh, the math works on it, let's do it. And then, uh, then they show that math to investors like private equity, hedge funds, etc. And not all those guys are bad guys, but the guys who funded this industry, they look at that and go, "Oh, so, so that many people are going to go bankrupt and lose their house and lose their, you know, their dignity, their respect, get their family hurt, and we're going to make a 29% margin. Those numbers look good. Here, let me give you money to do that." And all of that happened. And did you hear the press in America, the mainstream media going, "Can you believe this? This is outrageous. Look at how they're robbing you. Look at what they're doing to you." Nope. The band plays on. Yeah, no, exactly. And but what I like about this story, and credit to NPR for doing this investigative report. You know, we are critical of you know mainstream media oftentimes, but they do sometimes produce these investigative reports that are illuminating and give you a sense of just how many players are involved in this privatized healthcare system. And it's important to know that because when it comes to dismantling a private healthcare system, when it comes to advocating for, let's say, a single payer healthcare system, which would be far better for the patients in this country, it's important to know that it, it's a whole industrial complex. Because it's not just about the private health insurance companies, it's not just about the pharmaceutical companies, it's also about the banks, it's about the lenders who also make money off of preying on vulnerable people. And so there is a massive mountain to climb when it comes to fixing our healthcare system. And it isn't so easy as to just do, you know, doing away with private healthcare. It, it has a lot to do with all the other industries involved in profiting off of the pain and suffering of American patients. Yeah, and so I wanna give credit to NPR here because this is a terrific piece. So, but any of you are wondering, why do you ever criticize NPR if they do a terrific piece like that? Good question. If this is the kind of stuff that NPR did exclusively, then I wouldn't criticize NPR. I love NPR, right? Because this is great. But I guarantee you that if a progressive went on air, which is barely ever happens on NPR, but if they allowed a progressive to come on air and they criticized the Democratic leader for taking campaign contributions for medical loan sharks just like this, that they did a great story exposing, I guarantee you NPR hosts would say, oh, that's outrageous. No, you're talking about how these are bribes and these good Democrats are taking money from these. No, you don't, that's very uncivil. Don't say it, don't say it. So if this report was the rule in NPR rather than the exception, then I would love NPR, but it's definitely the exception. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.